Me hi, Aiken, do you have time? Aiken smiling time. I have an eternity, my dear. Me good, I won't take that long to ask you a few questions. So your ship is pretty, well, ship-like. Nice visiting you on board last night. Aiken as Ivo says, you are not aware of all you are capable of. Proper training would be in order. Me so where do you get that on earth? Oh uh, yes, you get yours in bits and pieces. Half of your battle is attempting to understand that you are not creating what you are seeing in your mind's eye, you are actually seeing it. Me so I saw Ivo in his ship but it was black and white and grainy. In your ship, I saw you in color. Is this like TV sets were in the 60s? We went from BW to color? Is this because of upgrades? Uh, no, it is because you were setting the dials that way. You are very capable of seeing realities in your third eye in color, however with Ivo's ship you decided you would only accept black and white, grainy images such as your ultrasound creates because that is what you read it would look like, so you adjusted it to that. But that is not necessary at all. You can see us in color. There, do you see what you did? At first you used the image that was portrayed for you and saw me as a cartoon-like character, but then you switched to my true image as I am speaking to you now. May I saw that. Uh, why would you have intuitive abilities, telepathic abilities, yet not be able to see? You have the entire package, my love. Me okay, thanks Aiken. That's good confirmation. So you have this panel of instruments to study the sun in your ship. Uh, my ship is specially designed for this purpose, yes. We record in video, if you will, the same as your scientists would with your instrumentation. Our data is far more advanced than your world's but it is more or less the same process. Me do you feel the energy of the sun? When she's dropping back or if she's getting stronger? Oh yes, and this possible from a distance as well. We simply need to focus in on her as she is sentient. Me so the big question is, Aiken, what is going on with the sun? Why are we seeing UFOs all around her, and why is there a big hole in her? As she is going through a magentic transformation. What in effect is happening is she is changing her frequency in order to go through ascension along with the planets in your solar system. Yes, Earth was the lag behind, and now that she is evolving, the sun can begin as well to leave the third, and travel through the fourth dimension. The energies that are coming into your sector of the galaxy are different they are photon energies, very strong energies, and are creating change in soul just as they are creating change within those upon your planet and the other planets. May I thought it was just Earth that was ascending? the other planets are reacting, but will remain in the fourth dimension. I get an impression that they will move somewhat higher but not like Earth is. Me and of course, Earth is ascending because she chose to. I guess the other planets can make that choice if they want to. Or they can. They, too, are sentient. Me so what will happen when there is only a 5D Earth and the other planets will still be in 4D? Will there still be something in 4D of Earth? A shell perhaps even a new planet will be born. Me interesting. What if she wants to evolve? She's going to have to wait for soul. Or merge with her. Me so nature abhors a vacuum, doesn't it? No such thing as a void in space where the planet once was. It is about balance. I'm intuiting that a star or a star system needs so many planets to rotate around it, as it slashed their chakras. It's all balanced, like we are with our chakra system. Me okay. There was another question I had about the ley lines on Earth. A Chaneller was saying that the sun emits energies, and these are taken in by the Earth, probably all over but the ley lines and chakras respond most. Uh, the sun emits many frequencies of light and sound. Yes, you were not thinking of sound when you considered this. It emits a sound. There is much music to be found around the galaxy. Me sounds interesting. How do you hear it? Uh, to be able to be of those frequencies is required. You must be high frequency to hear these sounds. Me so the sounds and other energies hit the surface of the earth and presumably penetrate. Then the earth's. But to understand the earth's chakra system, think of your own. Energy comes in through the highest chakra and is distributed throughout your chakra system according to the frequency of the chakra. The root chakra receives the lowest frequency. Energy can also come in from other people other chakra systems. Me so the root of earth is at Mount Shasta. If that's the lowest frequency of Earth, then... Uh, so you understand what a jewel your planet is. Me Aiken, there's a floating city above Mount Shasta. And that's the lowest frequency? Wow! Uh, yes. Me the highest chakra is in India, or Tibet, isn't it? Uh, yes. 
Do you see this is one of the most enlightened places on your planet? In your physical. There is no floating city above it. The enlightened are upon your planet. Me because of the energies being expressed. Wow! Earth, like you, has an energy body around it, but also the chakra system and meridians throughout the body to distribute energy. Earth is simply one chakra of the sun system. That is why there must always be a planet at the location wherever there are other planets. To keep the system intact. Uh, so you see what a jewel your planet is? A wise, enlightened being herself. Me pretty cool. So why is the sun getting a hole in it? As I was saying, it is going through a change itself, a magnetic change and the hole has come about because the magnetic field of the sun is altering in an inconsistent fashion. It will redistribute eventually however for now there's a hole and your people can see UFOs coming out of it. They always did come out of the sun as it is a stargate. Many races have learned how to make use of the direct energy system created by the galactic sun to its chakras, the stars of the various systems, as a way of transporting themselves. Yes, you are thinking of getting burned, but you do not get burnt when you are of a higher vibration than your sun is. If anything, you must take care not to damage her or that she takes in your energy and fluctuates because of this. I am sure you guys know what you're doing. Indeed we do. You find energy interesting. Me I'd like some. Uh, yes, ascension is training for your people. We see this. Me but it is interesting. It is everything, energy, vibration and frequency. So the sun, it's getting this hole, and I'm hearing about energy coming blasting out in the ether buffering it so that earth doesn't get fried in the process. Oh uh, yes, the sun delivers the energies coming from the galactic sun to you. The galactic sun is putting God through the ascension process, delivering energies so that she can ascend. So soul has quite a role in this process. The other suns deliver energy as well, more free floating or direct beam energy to your planet, but not using soul as a delivery vehicle. All suns can deliver energy to all planets. Think of them something like your trees who have root systems that create an underground energy delivery system that can span many many miles. All in nature are linked, as are humans. Telepathically linked. The physical is separate at these dimensional levels, but all are linked in consciousness. The trees are separate physical beings, they are telepathically linked but having a physical root system that connect them all, ultimately. The suns are similar. They are all connected to the galactic sun through the energy system, but are also interconnected themselves and as they emit energy, it goes to other planets and other constellations and solar systems. That is why you receive energies from Sirius, Vega and Orion, for example. Me so then I hear about Lion's Gate, 11 elevenths, and 12 twelfths. Uh, these are dates that portals open to your earth where these energies can come in. By and large, your malevolent captors had created a grid to block these incoming energies and your people have been poking holes in this grid to allow energies to come through. Yes, the light workers, the grid holders and gatekeepers. Re-establishing the natural system of energy flow back to your planet, bringing her back to life again. Because as you were told this week, your planet was all but dead when we began to intervene. What a pity it would have been. There is still much restoration to do to restore her back to her former glory, that of Eden, however we are confident this will occur in time. You were asking about the Earth's atmosphere. Yes, that is also heavily damaged. Many elements have been removed. Look at your Earth's atmosphere like the lens of an eye, which is the protective barrier for all the mechanics within the eye, and the lens itself has its own maintenance system. The atmosphere of your planet has this as well, but much has been removed either through nuclear abuse, pollution or lack of energies to sustain it. It is overwhelmed. This is why we must buffer your planet from the sun's plasma bursts, because your atmosphere will not protect you. Your earth cannot protect you from the cosmos energy as much as she should, so we intervene to assure your survival. Me well, thank you for that, Aiken. You are most welcome. We would not wish to see you extinct. You are our brethren. You are our children. Fortunately, we have the technology to assure a smoother transition for your people and Gaia, even in her weakened state. Me so interesting, Aiken. Thank you very much. You are most welcome, my dear. I bid you adieu. Me kiss kiss.